there are many different data structures in the JavaScript world, but which one you choose is going to make or break your application. But let me explain why choosing the right data structure for your project is very important. Now, if you don't know already, data structures is the way you store your data in your application. This might be an object, an array, a hash map, a linked list, and so on. And data structures are usually very closely tied to algorithms. If you try to search online for the best data structure, you're probably going to read something that has both the data structures and the algorithm. And the reason why these are very closely tied together is because which data structure you use really changes what algorithm is best to use with those. And I'm really not going to be talking about algorithms in this video, even though most of the things that I say can be applied to algorithms as well. And if you don't know which data structures already exist in JavaScript, I'm highly going to recommend stopping this video, going to learn which data structures exist in JavaScript and then coming back because I'm not really going to be going through all of those. Cool, so by now you should know which data structures exist in JavaScript and why they're closely tied together with algorithms. So let's dive into why choosing the right one is important for your application. But to better understand why it's important how we store our data, it's also very important to understand that there's very different ways where we can store our data. For example, if we just create a variable and add an array of objects in there, this is going to be stored in memory. But you can also store this array of objects in a database or an S3 bucket or anywhere else that allows you to store data. And each of these have different data structures and different ways of storing the data. And the same goes with cloud storage, block storage, file storage, and so on and so on. Because all of these storages have different kind of data that you can store in them, each of them has its own strength and limitations that comes with it. Now the answer to which data structure you should choose for application really is it depends. I've said this numerous times in my videos but the requirements is what actually drives the decision making behind building an application. For example, building a social media application for images is going to be very different than building a social media application for videos. If the posts are sorted by the user specific algorithm, it's really going to be different than sorting the post by chronological order. And I hope by now you understand why the requirements are actually the most important here when it comes to choosing the right data structures, choosing the right algorithms, and choosing the right place to store our data. There's mainly four things to consider when it comes to choosing the right data structure for your application. The first one I would say is performance. Each of the data structures have different kind of performance and for different applications as well. For example, having the numbers in a number and then having the numbers written down as letters. If you want to easily store these and map them over. It's easier to store these in an object where you can easily get the number value of a word or the other way around. The other thing to consider is the cost. Now, storing the data as an object is going to have different costs associated with it than storing the data as an array. And if you're storing in an external database, it's really going to depend on how much you use it, how much you write in the database, how much you're going to read from it. And if you're really going to be doing any complex operations. So this is a big one that really depends on where you're storing your data. Now the third one I think is the ease of development. Now this is basically what the developer is used to and the way that they used to work. For some developers it might be easier to store something as an array of objects. For another developer it might be a hash map or something else. And at the end of the day we're all trying to build something for our end users. And there might be multiple correct answers how to store your data, but choosing the right one is really going to depend on what the developer is used to and the decision of the team. And the fourth one is a bit a tricky one, but this is the knowledge of possibilities. I don't really know how to explain this one well, but basically, if you don't know what a hash map is or that it even exists, you're not really going to think about storing your data in a hash map, even though that might be the best answer for your use case. So trying to learn all the different data structures, all the different ways you can store data, manipulate it, use it. This is really going to help you choose the right one when it comes down to it. Now I know when I was a beginner, I thought I knew everything and my answers were always the correct. I was choosing the best languages to code with. At least that's what I thought. I didn't really know all the possibilities out there. So I couldn't really know what the best one is until I've learned most of them, not all of them, but most of them. And this really applies to everything that you do. Might be the technology stack, the language, the data structures, the algorithms, the place you store your data, where you're hosting your applications, really applies to everything. But the lack of knowledge is something that can have a big impact on your application. And like I said, each of the data structures is going to have its own strengths and weaknesses. So 
Really choosing the base data structure is understanding which trade-offs are you willing to accept. Now there's a graph that I found somewhere researching for this video where there's basically a few steps that allows you to choose the best data structure for you. First one is understand problem and constraints. Basically, if you don't really understand the problem, what constraints the problem has, you can't really choose the best data structure. Then the next one is evaluate data's requirements. This really comes down from the understanding of the problem and the constraints. Then we need to identify which data structures are meeting the key requirements. And then the fourth one is, are the data structures trade-offs acceptable for the problem? And this is what I just mentioned. It's really important to understand all the trade-offs for the different data structures and be willing to work with them. If the answer here is no, then we go back and evaluate a different data structure. If the answer is yes, then we select that data structure. So make sure to get to know all the different data structures that are out there, experiment and understand how they work and what their trade-offs are. So when the next time you need to choose the best data structure for your solution, you can choose the right one. And also nowadays, the way that we code is very much abstracted from the core of implementing all these data structures. For example, if you use JavaScript, you're not really going to be implementing a linked list. You're just going to use the linked list that JavaScript provides. And you're not really going to be implementing your algorithms for getting an item from the linked list. Most of the times, you're just going to be using what JavaScript provides. And this is not to say that you shouldn't understand all of these and how this works, but most of the time, they don't really matter. For me, the goal is building the best possible solution for the end user. And most of the times, the algorithm is not really important. The user doesn't really know the alg which algorithm was used. They just know that the application was fast or it fell fast to them. They get the results they wanted and they can use the app with ease. But in some situations, you would need to have a custom way of implementing a linked list, for example, and the provider solution by JavaScript is not going to work for you. So this is usually the place where you need to know how to implement a linked list and make it custom for your use case. And also these are types of skills that are gonna differentiate a junior from a senior engineer. Knowing how these deeper level structures work and knowing how to implement them or create their own, even if you don't need to most of the time, is what's gonna make a difference when someone else is looking at your skills and trying to evaluate what kind of developer are you. So that's been pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any feedback, put it down in the comments below. Like, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the day. Happy coding. Bye.